I wanted to know, you know, are there any tips that you can leave for, you know, again, our demographic, Black men out there, even men in general that may be going through something traumatic or just need to sort of heal from something? Is there any, are there any tips that you can share um, with them uh, so they can, you know, feel empowered? Sure. So one of my favorite uh, sayings or quotes or just things that I, I tend to live by, um, especially for my men, is uh, feel your feelings. You know, because oftentimes men don't feel their feelings um, unless it's those good ones, right? We want to process all of those feelings um, in, in healthy ways, I should say, you know, because t more than likely when they're feeling those feelings, the good ones or the bad ones is either a result of reckless behavior, being promiscuous or, you know, anger issues and stuff like that. So we want to feel them in positive ways to process. And we also want to ensure that we're ignoring the perception of others. Like be true and authentic to yourself. Um, and that's your only matter. You know, you should live in a way that is true and authentic to you outside of the perception of others because people are gonna want you to be who they want you to be and you're gonna be drowning yourself out. So ensure that you're living for you um, in a way that you are your true self. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Such good tips to live by. And, you know, now that we're talking about how dire it is, I'm sure people are wondering how can they donate, right? Because that's what I go to. I'm like, okay, yeah. how can I help, right? And mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I remember you posted on Facebook, you know, a donation site uh, called ADRA. Could you tell us a bit more about ADRA? Sure. Access it. Sure, ADRA International is a global NGO, which basically means they serve, you know, the countries around the world, and they and they're one of the first people um, to kind of come into a crisis when there's a, when there's a, a world um, issue on, on the on the world stage. And ADRA right now um, is actually in India right now, um, and they are providing support. They're providing um, medical kits. They're providing medical aid. Um, you know, they're right there in, in the forefront. And I've worked with ADRA um, many, many times on other projects before. Um, they're one of the organizations, international organizations that I trust and believe and know that they're um, that the money is going to where you think it's supposed to go. Yes. And I will just tell you, there's two places that you can go. Um, you know, there's there's Adra A D R A dot com, or there's also Adra Canada, and that's A D R A Adra dot C A, and they're doing fabulous work. And you can see that they get a A plus rating for their donations, and they're well vetted. Zumba became something that you know used it as a tool. Um, to help you to think of yourself in a more positive way and to use it as a way of um, inspiring positivity in others uh, and wanting others to recognize that, you know, you can accept you for who you are and, you know, by being an example of that, um, others were able to be inspired. I never set out to be an inspiration though. <laughs> That's the thing. So I, you know, a lot of times people will say, you're so inspiring. And it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. I mean, that's great. But I really set out to, okay, get healthier, get fitter and challenge myself. And being an inspiration is, is ancillary, right? So I think it also goes to show that in our transition stories, oftentimes we think it's about us, right? We think it's about us and our change and everything. When in fact, we owe we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to, you know, our higher, higher power or whoever we, we we think has created us to be authentic to ourselves. And by so doing that inner work for ourselves, that influences everybody else around us. That's why, you know, a change is not so much I think a lot of people think change is very individual and and not really realizing that there are perhaps other people out there in the world who are depending on you for you to change for them in order for them to change so that's one thing i started to realize all right what are some tips you could leave with us, our guests our listeners 
um, things that, you know, maybe you can pass on to them, like someone that may be, you know, that has cancer, for example, or somebody that maybe has has had trauma or went through trauma at some point. How can you, you know, what are some things you can leave with them to help them to figure out a way to transition as well? So for both of them, I'm going to start with the importance of loving yourself. Um, and it's biblical, right? Because the Bible tells us that we have to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So if mm-hmm. you don't love yourself, how do you love your neighbor? Yeah. Love is also an action word. So how are you speaking to yourself? How do you treat yourself? Um, how do you see yourself? What do you say to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you say about yourself? I read this amazing quote that said, be careful what you say about yourself because you are listening. Mm-hmm. But, wow, that was that's amazing. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say is having surgery doesn't mean that your faith is weak. I chose not to have surgery. That was my choice. What I would suggest if you are having surgery or if you're choosing to have surgery, try to lean towards restorative surgery where they will only take out a part of the organ or even um, if you have something like nodules or lumps in a certain area, they would just remove the nodule or the lumps rather than taking out or total surgery where they take everything out. Because at least if you have parts of it, you're able to do what you can to help rebuild that part so that it's able to do the work that it was put in you to do. Mm -hmm. Having to live off of a pill that is going to have additional side effects for the rest of your life. Makes sense. Um, yeah. The next thing I would suggest is the importance of confronting yourself. Mm-hmm. It is very important. And this is more so for my folks that have had past trauma. Sometimes we bury the trauma so deep inside that we don't even think of it as trauma. So confront yourself. It, it's very important that you do the work of sitting down and saying, this happened to me. Mm-hmm and being okay with understanding that it happened to you, then get the help. Those tips are so amazing, right? And even when you talk about the EKG rhythms, like, you know, it's almost like that roller coaster effect, right? Mm -hmm. Recognizing Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's normal that life's gonna go up and down, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sort Mm -hmm. of like, you know, the normal rhythm of life and, you know, Mm -hmm. just life physically, (laughs) the way Mm -hmm. that your heart beats and and all of that is an up Mm -hmm. and down sort of Mm -hmm. rhythm. Um, mm-hmm. and normalizing that and I really appreciate that because it's so important for people to recognize and um, that you know it's normal to seek help and I know you talked about sort of you know to breathe life back into an individual mm-hmm. takes a community <laughs> getting back to that village that you talked about earlier right so you mentioned you know throughout your tips that idea of stillness So reducing your anxiety by, you know, having moments of stillness in your life, you know, creating, you know, structure and routine so that you can be disciplined with what you need to do so you can carry out your purpose and then sort of normalizing, you know, the need for community and people around you to breathe, you know, positivity in life into you as a person. I really appreciate, you know, what you shared with us today people who are wanting to sort of seek help, right? Who are finding it difficult. What are some tips that you can give to them so that they can, you know, identify maybe when is it the right time to seek help? um, And then where can they go? Yeah. Well, you know, at this point, that's a question I've been pondering a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, My answer to that would be that anytime that you're facing a situation that feels larger than yourself, Mm -hmm. that's the time to Mm-hmm. Right? Um, community is essential for our mental well-being. Mm-hmm. COVID has taken that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there's a whole lot of things that tend to come up when we're isolated. Our minds go to very dark places. Mm-hmm. And the important thing is to know that you're not alone. Mm-hmm. And even if all you do is show up to your appointment, mm-hmm. that's that's work yeah. and that's brave. Yes. And the rest of that is my job. Mm-hmm. is to help you to, to feel comfortable and connected and understood. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as, as I would, you know, hope to have the community know, 
Yes, I know that there's distrust mm -hmm. of certain systems in place. I understand that there's a historical abuse mm -hmm. that we have faced. Mm -hmm. That is real and I don't want to diminish that. Mm -hmm. But there are people like you and people like me who are from the community. Yes, definitely. And so we get it mm -hmm. because it's a felt experience. Mm -hmm. It's an experience I didn't really understand till I left home and came here and understood it in mm -hmm. a felt capacity. Mm -hmm. The idea here is that people like you and people like me, we want our community to be well. Mm -hmm. We're not going to harm you. Mm -hmm. We're not going to further stigmatize you. We're not going to judge you. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing, is all people are going to judge me. Counselors don't judge you. And that's the thing that I really want people to know. And it's also that space of recognizing change can be uncomfortable and it probably yes. will be uncomfortable yes. and there will be some challenging mm -hmm. you know spots in there and yes. recognizing you know those things so how did you work through the challenge uh, to get to maybe where you are now yeah so i think there's a few things right having support mm -hmm. um, having support from people around you people like in your community where you find yourself mm -hmm. um, like looking for a community and also just community back home um, friends, family, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So definitely leaning on that. I think the other thing is kind of embracing that change is uncomfortable yeah. and not trying to run away from the discomfort. You know, sometimes when uncomfortable emotions come up, we just want to run away from it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I just don't want any change to happen yes. so that I can stay in my safe bubble. Mm -hmm. But the more we can kind of embrace our capacity to sit with uncomfortable feelings, the easier it gets, really. Yes, yes. Um, so definitely just like, yes, this is uncomfortable and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I'm choosing to do for my life. This is what fits within my values. And it's uncomfortable because it's new. That's okay. Both can be there. You know, ways that maybe people that are in your position who want to get to another place in their journey, you know, how can they do that? Yeah, one of the things that I, I focus on with, with Start, Grow, Pivot is understanding the person's values. I ask mm -hmm. them questions like, what are your strengths? I do a, a assessment and I'm like, what are your strengths? What are your goals? And mm -hmm. what are your values? What are you doing that's working? And what are you doing that's not working? And many a times people are, are, are stumped by that question because they haven't really, you know, you know, sat down to really strategize. And I realized we can sometimes just be on all the time. Go, 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 go. And I do that sometimes. I'm like, okay, now I need to do this. Now I need to do this marketing plan. Now I need to do this campaign. And then sometimes my husband or my sister are like, what exactly are you trying to achieve here? And I'm like, that's what I ask my clients. I'm just going and you need to stop and reflect. Reflection is, you know, reflection can help you strategize and strategy can help you work smarter. And my whole thing with start group pivot is are you working really smart or are you working really hard a lot of people think well i i submitted about a thousand or i submitted a hundred applications i do 10 applications a day and no callbacks no one is getting in touch with me and i'm like did those 10 applications that you submit a day like how personalized and how tailored are they to the to the hiring manager like the hiring manager you cannot sit down and customize your resume 10 times. It's not humanly possible. So you're probably just doing a few tweaks here and there and you're sounding like everyone else. How do you really bring you to the table? How do you really say that this is what I want to do? This is what really aligns with me and this is what I want to go after. And if you take your time and do one application, sometimes I have a, my, my to-do list of 10 things. And then I look at it and at the end of the day and I was only able to do one thing. And I'm like, oh, I, can't, I have so much to do. And, and that one thing that I, I spent, I agonized on will actually make the 10 things easier the next day. Yes. So do you have to do 10 applications a day? Do you have to send 10 LinkedIn messages a day? Why don't you just really pick one person, pick one company, pick one role, spend two weeks on that and see where that takes you. If you were to share any tips with uh, the audience, so it sounds like you're a career, it's a career transition that you're sharing. So it could be, you know, new counselors out there. It could be anybody maybe sort of moving from, you know, one uh, aspect of their job and trying to do something new. Um, what are some, I guess, tips you could share um, that may be helpful for them? Yeah. 
my my first tip is a few times take risks even coming from me take risks apply for expired job postings connect with people who you want to work with don't be afraid to be rejected right yeah. um and and that's a huge a huge risk but especially when you're in a position where you're just getting yourself situated there's there's nothing to lose mm -hmm. um Another thing that was really helpful for me was to network with other professionals. So through my work with Parallel Wellness in my private practice, I've met with a lot of practitioners to get a sense of what is their philosophy, what is the type of work that they do, how can it um, complement counseling, and how might we be able to um, create a referral stream for one another and that's been mm -hmm. super successful in terms of building a, a private practice and also being able to understand um, I think for me more deeply what are my my values and what is my approach to mental health and well-being and then I can support my clients through that um, because more more resources that we can refer to and that we can talk about in session too um, Another piece is to set boundaries, especially, you know, in, in starting a private practice, just knowing where your limits are, making sure that you're not burning yourself out because then you're no good to anybody, not even your clients, certainly not yourself. <laughs> um, that's That's been a big learning piece, you know, having a wide open calendar and the availability to meet anyone in time is well and good and helps you and then you don't want to be handcuffed to that. So have some boundaries set so that there is time for you and your life and your schedule. Um, another thing that I've been refining and refining, and I think this comes after the imposter syndrome, there's like a, a maturation that happens is to, um, Go with what you know in terms of private practice. If it's not establishing a niche, then understand where you really enjoy working. What are those concerns or those you know, presenting issues where you've got a treatment plan down pat or you know that things flow really well? And then make sure that you have other colleagues or therapists who you network with that you can refer to. And again, that will be another referral stream and then you're not ever getting out of your own depths. And I think supervision is a natural add-on for checking yourself to checking your blind spots by having that regular supervision. Go for it. Like if you're going to do something, whatever it is in life you're gonna do, like go hard for it, do what you gotta do, trust God. And if you fail, like I would rather fail knowing I went all in than not even doing it and not yeah. even seeing what it may have, you know, may have come of that. So fail big is just to, if you're going to do it, just do it big. If you're yeah. going to fail, fail big. You know what I mean? Shoot for the stars and you may miss the star that you're shooting for, but you'll land somewhere. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so that, that, that's the goal. That's, that's really the whole um, idea of uh, the project is just to, you're going to fail. Failure is inevitable. Any, any um what are, what are those those any motivational speakers and they'll tell you that if you listen to these guys these guys every single individual fails and i think we as people deem an idol certain people thinking oh they're, they're just there and they're just amazing and it's like it takes work it takes failures it takes starting from scratch again it takes mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All of those types of uh, uh, challenges to really get to where you're at. So it's really just an encouragement on that. And I hope, you know, the women that listen to <laughs> this, you know, for years to come will be able to pull, you know, a few things out. I can tell you right now, I've pulled a few things out. <laughs> and the first thing is go back and read those journals, Trisha, because you never know what you're going to find in there, you know, as gems <laughs> that yeah. can be realized today. Yeah. So mm. that's the first thing I'm taking away. <laughs> the second thing I'm taking away is surround yourself with positive people, people who are going to inspire you and, and, and don't be afraid to ask for help. 
So that's all within that, you know, surround yourself with positive people. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And the last thing is don't be afraid to let go. Do some spring cleaning in your life, whether that's physical stuff that you need to get you know, rid of <laughs> or people who are holding you back and holding you down and you're not able to realize what you need to realize because they're still there. So, mm. you know, those are great tips, you know, to walk away with um, that I'm sure ha has helped you and can yeah. help so many other women in their life. <laughs>